Charles, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Super. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, how are you doing? I'm okay. I actually I got a flu, so I had to visit a, a doctor to get a corona test. <laughs> but my current job it's very strict. Whenever you have flu, you need to take this test. So oh, uh, well, that's why I was I, I was gone for for a while. Oh, well, but otherwise okay. Yeah, well, but it's just I just have a cold. Don't feel any other symptoms, but it's just very strict. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that part, and I'm hoping that uh, everything comes back negative and everything will be uh, coming out uh, uh, the way it should. But um, you know, with that, uh, I'm glad that uh, we were able to uh, catch up once again. And um, you know, oddly enough, not talking about Instant Ferum, but uh, talking about some brand new music from your side of the other realm here and it's great to be able to see like uh, you expanding what a lot of people may not know that you were capable of with just doing interfering but being able to really broaden your horizons here with this new ep yes well it's uh well, I, when i started this crowdfunding campaign i told it's like a, it's been like a skeleton in the closet this kind of <laughs> industrial electric stuff that i always loved since I, I would say prodigy was probably the first one that really really got me into this kind of stuff uh but it was really about uh, technology pretty much that i i didn't have the means uh to do it but nowadays you can do so much with just in your home studio so what i just needed was a uh, professional guys to mix it and help me with the graphics and yeah oh yeah and you know that's the great thing about technology these days i mean especially with uh, the the price of recording equipment going down so much compared to what it was decades ago and you know people being able to have their own home studios at home now and being able to at least come up with demos if not full-on uh, releases and it's great to see that you were actually able to make this come to fruition like that yeah i'm very happy well i've been building it up slowly and it's yeah i, I just record i it's totally different story to really have the know-how and uh, have the equipment to really mix. Well, maybe not the equipment that much, because nowadays you can do so much with just plugins and, well, still some, well, quite many uh, studio engineers use like real, you know, hard, <laughs> how do you call it? Hardware, you know, effects and compressors and so on. But uh, yeah, I, I have means to record, but that's pretty much it. But uh, that's why you need to ask help from other people and then you're gonna have a professional result. Oh, absolutely. And that's what comes here with uh, the self-titled release. I mean, it's just, it's it's really great to see, like, uh, all seven of these ideas coming through here and then being able to see uh, an acoustic version of I Consume on there, too. I mean, it's great being able to hear, like, both sides of that coming through. I mean, like, the, the, the full-on edition and the acoustic version. Yeah, that's something that uh, I remember when I sent it, uh, when I sent the EP to our manager, well, it's NC Pedals and my other band's Pedal Factors manager, and a good friend of mine. Well, I, I sent him the EP, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, this is really good stuff." And I was like, "What the what the fuck is the last last song? Like, is this some kind of Finnish humor?" <laughs> I was like, "No, it's I like acoustic stuff, and uh, most of the stuff that I have ever composed, for for example, for Enzi Ferrum, it's just me sitting down with acoustic guitar and uh, you know humming a melody and just playing chords. So it's something that I really enjoy uh, playing acoustic guitar, and I." Uh, to like acoustic versions of stuff. So one he, one time I was just jamming and I noticed, oh shit, this is I consume. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, this would work very well as a kind of bluegrass version. And uh, I thought, okay, I'm gonna include it on the album. And the funny detail about that, that's the only song with real drums on the EP and uh, played by <laughs> played by me. And uh, thank God it's a simple song because I'm really not a drummer. <laughs> Well, that that's so cool though i mean when i was listening to that version i was wondering if there was a, a real drums going on with there or not but um you know even with the simplicity i thought you did an amazing job with that i mean knowing that you did the beat behind that and then the idea of being able to do the full-on acoustic version of i consume i i really love how that came together well thank you thank you uh and yeah there's like upright bass and everything i don't know know if you can really hear it that well but uh, uh if i ever do this kind of stuff again i, I think i probably get more even more blue grassy version but let's let's see actually uh, i might go in totally different kind of direction with the <laughs> with the bonus tracks in the future let's see <laughs> oh i would i would totally love to hear that too i mean even 
uh, with this release, you know, it's just like, it, it was great to be able to hear you going into a different style and, you know, just uh, being able to show that you can play all these different instruments, that you can come up with all these different ideas for genres, and then you're able to do, like, kind of a bluegrass acoustic song at the very end of it. I mean, you know, it's just like, it, it just shows that you're capable of so much more than Insufferum for what uh, a lot of people may know you for, and the more that they dig deep into what this is about, I mean, it's going to be great to be able to see what else you can accomplish with this uh, i think that's uh i dare to say that's the same thing with uh, most of the musicians uh they have a lot of potential and i i dare to say like even will to do different kind of stuff uh, let's say think like acdc guys you know they have mastered what they do decades ago but i'm sure sometimes they like to jam other kind of stuff but <laughs> maybe they don't do it that publicly they have their own skeletons in the closet yeah, who knows who knows oh it's very possible and you know i'm glad to see that these uh, skeletons did come out of the closet because i'm always a fan of when a band you know when either it's uh they're taking uh time off they're writing between albums you know touring or something like this in 2020 where everything gets uh scrapped out the window and we just got to yeah. figure out what we're doing for the rest of the year that you actually were able to take the time to be able to continue working on this you know rather than you know just sit and wait for when touring or possibility of studio Videos opening up to record new music for Insufferum. You just went and took it upon yourself to be able to actually get your solo work together with this and actually have this come out in 2020. I think it was the only possible way to do it. Usually I'm on tour so much and uh, when you come out of come from the tour you have other obligations and uh, you know normal life. <laughs> so <laughs> then there's that not much time but now there was well, a few weeks. I really did this when Corona kind of started. Uh, no one knew how long it's going to last. And uh, maybe I still had my hopes up that like in the end of the summer, we're going to do some festivals. He was just thinking like, yeah, yeah, I have a few weeks off now. So yeah, a bunch of I raw ideas, maybe not, well, maybe, you know, record this stuff now and uh, try this uh, crowdfunding thing because uh, it sounded like a good idea how to get the finance for this. And yeah, but when the Corona seem to last a bit longer uh, i you know have to pay my bills so i apply for a normal job and now it would be impossible to do this one because uh, yeah it takes like 10 hours of my day just you know to travel to work and have a normal shift and then come back home and that's it so i'm very happy that i did it in the spring but i have uh, say maybe four songs almost ready for this band or project <laughs> so uh i'm gonna once this is out, it's going to be released end of this month. And then I'm really going to focus on the new songs and uh, try to get maybe even get one single new single out this year. Let's see. Oh, that, that'd be incredible to see if that if that can happen or not. And, you know, especially when uh, 2020 has uh, taken so many things uh, away, you know, that you're still able to go out there, provide for yourself. And, you know, uh, ev even with the travel that comes with uh, working jobs like that, I mean, the the, the fact that yeah. you're still thinking about uh, uh, this release, thinking about uh, writing songs for it, thinking about uh, what could happen in the future. I mean, it's great mm -hmm. to see that that passion is still going on despite everything going on. Absolutely. And uh, at the same time, we're working with new Enziferum songs. And uh, yeah, my power metal band, Metal Effector, we are working with the second album. Uh, the first album came out pretty much a year ago. I think it was November. So we have all the songs ready pretty much for the second album. So now it's just about starting to record that. So yeah, the passion for music is always there. Oh. No matter if there's a like a day job. <laughs> screwing up my schedule but oh absolutely that will never go away yeah and i'm glad to hear that you guys are working on the second album too i mean i loved what you guys uh did and released last year i mean it, that that's got me excited to see what will happen in 2021 whatever the case is i mean i really love what you guys did with the first album i can't wait to hear what comes well, thank next you. thank you yeah it's uh well you can definitely recognize the band but uh Oh, well, I guess every musician say that it's going to be better than the previous one, but I think it's only natural to feel that way. Because, uh, from every recording session, every album, whatever, well, every release, you learn something from that session. Uh, even even the EP now, if I listen to it now, I can hear like, damn, you know, I could have done this and this. Well, if I'm better, but differently, you know, like small arrangement stuff, not, nothing big. I'm very happy with the result and uh, very proud of the song. But, that's how it goes always. You notice small things afterwards, like, damn, you know, next time I'm, I'm going to do this differently. And uh, and uh, that's why I'm really looking forward to all the all the new stuff that's coming up, uh, new Enzi Ferro, new Metal Factor, and, yeah, new solo stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
yeah, again, you know, between all three of those going on and, you know, just uh, the, the quality work that you're doing and, you know, it's just, it's so great to see all of this happening. And, you know, it's just, a, it, it is such a shame what's happened here in 2020 with uh, COVID and the, the full on yeah. pandemic that's still going on here. And, you know, the fact that in America, it's still going as uh, rampant as it is, you know, like one of the strongest uh, countries where, yeah. where people are continuing on uh, getting killed every day from this. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. What, what, yeah. It happened with the brand new virus that, that no one expected to come out of this. I mean, maybe like a previous disease or something, but something brand new like this and people, scientists just trying to understand it. And it, it's just so unfortunate that uh, especially the live arts and entertainments are getting affected so hard by that. And they're, they're just having to worry so much about like the, the studio side and writing songs of what they can do until things can get back to some kind of normalcy. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I really feel well, sorry for many of my friends, uh, you know, musicians, technicians, who uh, maybe didn't have a plan B. Uh, that's why, you know, Sami of today is really thanking Sami of the past because I studied like two professions 20 years ago. So that's why I could get a job now and to just, you know, pay my bills. So I, I will manage, but I really feel sorry for the guys who don't have any plan at the moment, are just waiting for things to start again or trying to go in school and re-educate themselves and it's that's hard but it's and it's a global thing so it's uh, really affecting hundreds of thousands of people oh it truly is and yeah again you know it's just like none of us kind of expected this to happen and nah. i am so i mean that is very fortunate that you were able to uh re rely on your other path in life and being able to do that until things get back to some kind of normalcy and you know i can just imagine yeah. be it's in uh, 2021 possibly even 2022 whatever the case is when you're finally able to get back on that stage i mean i can only imagine that's yeah. gonna be the greatest feeling yeah i'm really looking forward to that well we did one uh, festival in uh, in finland this summer it was it was a lot of fun even though it was a festival set you know not that long i think it was one hour or something and but it was a lot of fun and we had the new events for remember becca the keyboard player slash clean vocal singer really on stage with us for the first time and uh, it was a lot of fun i i really cannot wait to get on a proper tour and, and do like big festivals around europe and yeah coming back to north america that's always a pleasure but <laughs> Uh, you know, our management and uh, booking agencies, they are, well, obviously they have plans for next spring, but it really doesn't look that good now, to be honest. Uh, I mean, even if they would come up with the vaccine today, just the, the manufacturing and distributing it, that's so big project. So, well, of course, I hope that will be a touring next spring, but... Uh... It doesn't look that good at the moment. Oh, that yeah, that is the unfortunate reality of what's going on in the world. But yeah. I, you know, as long as you know the things can continue to go in the right direction and shows are able to come back at some point, I mean, it's going to be amazing mm -hmm. to hear what you guys are doing now with Becca, being able to hear the new music live, hear what you guys are coming up with ne for the next release. You know, it's just like it. It's, yeah. it's obviously a lot of pain that's going on in the world right now, but I'm really hoping at the end of it when uh, hopefully some kind of normalcy comes back and I get to hear some new Insiferum and all of the other work that you do, uh, especially in that live setting when I get to see you guys again here in Minnesota. I mean, I think it's just going to be yeah. incredible to be able to have that experience of seeing you guys live again. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah, Minnesota has always been. It's one of the best anyway. <laughs> in the whole, <laughs> the whole, co whole continent has always really good atmosphere in these shows. Oh, and and I'm, I'm so glad to hear that too. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, North America is still uh, very much on the radar when there is touring coming back. I know Europe's doing a bit better than us right now, and I imagine that uh, European tours would be coming first before North America. But, you know, I'm still glad to see that you guys were able to play a, a show in Finland a, a couple months back. And even though that, that might be it for quite a while, I'm glad to see that there was still something that could happen in 2020 just to see what that live feeling was like again. Yeah, well, we actually have two shows now uh, uh, for, uh, I think it's de yeah, December uh, in Helsinki, but those are like very limited uh, capacity. I think it's like two, max 300 people in the whole venue that normally holds like eight, 900 people, something like this. Uh, Amorphis just played three shows, same venue. Uh, they had like, no, no, they had six shows. They had two shows per day. Like the first one was uh, their first 10 years. The second was, second day they played two shows, just songs from their second decade. And the, and the third day they had two shows playing songs from the last 10 years. That was a really cool idea. And yeah, they played six shows in uh, in three days. That's kind of cool. Oh, that really so there, there's still, there is still some live activity here, but uh, 
it's really changing like weekly basis i dare to even say daily basis there's this constant and kind of fear <laughs> like every morning when you open the news like okay like the damage report you know how many <laughs> cases in the last 24 hours and uh, i guess the government also and uh, health you know uh, professionals how do you call it the organization they are monitoring the situation and uh, and now they're putting more restrictions on nightclubs and bars so naturally it's gonna affect the live scene but let's see i still have my hopes up for the december shows it would be really cool to play those oh totally and I, I didn't realize Amorphous did that. And I love the idea of how they did that too. I mean, because they are so diverse with their sound. I mean, when you go between every decade, there's some brand new sounds that's going into it every time. So that's such a great idea. I mean, in, in when it comes to you with uh, Insufirum, I think that would be a really cool idea, like uh, being able to go into the classics, being able to go into the newer stuff and in between. I mean, you, well, well, even just getting to play those shows coming up in December, I mean, that's going to be a great feeling in and of itself but I can imagine it's going to be quite strange playing to what would be normally like a third of the capacity compared to everything else but still it's great to see that fans are going to be able to get that opportunity yes absolutely and it's going to be well I'm quite sure it's going to be a bit weird even though there's going to be audience because we did this stream show when the new album came out and that was that was very weird though <laughs> playing a kind of rehearsals in front of camera and I'm, I've never been a big fan of making music videos anyway, so that was a bit weird. But anyway, they're playing for a smaller capacity. That's going to be, well, better than nothing. But I'm sure people are also going to have, you know, the social distancing mode on. So the, I, I doubt that there will be any mosh pits or crowd surfing or anything like that. I think people are just going to stand like one meter apart and <laughs> and just in, enjoy the music and maybe sing along. But that's how I, I guess it's going to be. But let's see. If people get drunk, maybe they forget it and not have mosh pits. <laughs> well, that's very true. I mean, once I alcohol comes into the equation a lot of things start to slide exactly then many things are not that serious anymore <laughs> Well, that's so true. But yeah, I mean, again, you know, like uh, getting back into uh, this new release coming up here, I'm, I'm, you know, besides the fact that it, I'm glad you were able to make the time to be able to have this coming out in 2020. I love the fact it's actually coming out the day before Halloween too. I mean, it seems like uh, the 30th of October is like a big metal release day that's uh, been going on with a lot of releases that I've been seeing. And I'm glad to see that you were able to add it for that too. I mean, it feels very appropriate. Uh, I'd say that was just a coincidence, but uh, yeah, <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah, it's quite a cool thing. Yeah, it kind of fits, well, Halloween and Metal, they kind of fit, fit in together. Oh, very much so. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, again, when, you know, it's just when I listen to the music and stuff and, you know, just like he hearing these different sides and, you, you know, being able to hear this more of the electronic industrial kind of sound that uh, you were going for with this. And, you, you know, it's just like uh, you were having this skeleton in your closet and you're finally able to... Er uh, finally able to uh, release it to the crowd. I mean, you know, obviously this has been worked on for a long time, but where did the, like, the first ideas come from that you wanted to release something like this? Hmm. Well, like I said, I liked a lot of this kind of music a long, long time ago. Uh, I, I started in the 90s. Yeah, I remember, well, Prodigy and uh, Nine Inch Nails, White Zombie and stuff like this. Uh, but I think it was Peter Tactrain's Pain and the album Rebirth. I think that oh, yes. was the first time I was like, I was like, fuck, you know, this is good stuff. And uh, maybe someday it would be cool to do something like this. But uh, at, at that time, uh, you know, having a PC laptop with an <laughs> old Sound Blaster uh, sound card or whatever, and there was really no chance to create uh, professional stuff at home. At least I didn't have the know how. Uh, well, I was recording like really shitty demos already then, but uh, I think that was like the first time I was thinking like, yeah, this could be cool to do something like this. And that was really in the early thousand. And my friend had this album and uh, yeah, I couldn't find the album anywhere from Helsinki for some reason. Maybe it was sold out in all record stores. And uh, I was going to Stockholm with my friends to see Mr. Bungle, uh, Mike Patton's band. Oh, yes. And, uh, and uh, I was on a crusade. I, <laughs> I was on a holy mission that yeah, you know, I'm gonna be in Stockholm, so there has to be a record store that sells pain. And yeah, I found it, and it's one of the it's kind of gem in my uh, album collection because there's uh, this cool story that I just didn't download it from somewhere. I really went to another country to get it, and I think there even is still is the sticker with the you know Swedish crowns, the price still in the <laughs> <laughs> in the CD. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the case. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. No, but no, um, 
I mean, Rebirth is such a great album, and I, I just love everything that Payne's done. I mean, uh, even Coming Home, I thought was such an amazing album to come out in 2016, yeah. and I just, I've always loved what Peter's done with, with Payne, and, you know, the fact that you were able to get inspiration like that, and I'm also very jealous that you got to see Mr. Bunkle as well. I've never gotten the opportunity, but, you know, being able to do that and, you know, being able to find that, that that's just so cool. Yeah, and what I really love, uh, uh, well, I like Payne, but I think Peter has always done this with such pride. I mean, <laughs> like in the early 2000s, I think it was kind of a bold move to make something that sounds like something like Eurodance, but still metal enough. And uh, especially a guy that's known for hypocrisy. That was like a brave move, but he really did it with, did it with uh, pride. And I really like that, you know, as a musician, yeah, I like to do this kind of stuff. And pff, there we go. Oh. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, just you know, the you know, the guy that is so known for writing death metal about aliens shows that he can show off a different side of himself. And you know, I think that's uh, very translated to uh your career as well too. I mean, you're not just known for what you can do in Insiferum. I mean, you you do amazing work with power metal. You're doing amazing work here uh showing off the industrial and electronic sides of what you can do and you know, just uh, being able to balance all of that out in some kind of way, shape, or form. I mean, it's just, I know for some people, it's hard enough just having one band and uh, one project to be able to focus on, but the fact that um, you're able to do all this, show all of that to shine, and now coming up on the 30th of October, being able to have uh, the rest of the world being able to check this out because it is such a great release. And yeah, I'm Thank really you. excited for people to be able to hear it because, I mean, I've been able to check it out uh, courtesy of you uh, being able to check this out and just loving what you're doing and i hope others feel the same way as i do well let we shall see and uh, yeah I'm, I'm very happy that i've been able to do it this way and uh now that I look back, like when I was starting to play bass, like as a kid, there was not there was not that many bass players in my hometown, and uh, so I was kind of wanted. <laughs> uh, so I might have, might have had like seven re band rehearsals per week, but with different bands, like different style, like have like death metal, and next day it was funk, and then pop, and and whatever. And, and at some point, my dad, who was a drummer since he was twelve or something like this, he was playing like a, how do you call it, like like old dance music, but you know, real like tango and waltz and the stuff that people have. In, in weddings <laughs> he, he, he was playing these kind of gigs and at some point he asked me to play this kind of stuff with him also like playing in uh, pubs and yeah weddings and companies Christmas parties and uh, so that also opened my eyes to that kind of style and where, where I'm going is that uh, I've been always playing with different people and a lot of different kind of music I think that kind of broadened my horizon uh, I even played in uh, what do you call like chill out down tempo band where we didn't even have a drummer it was just two guys besides me they're playing guitars and have tons of keyboards and we even played some shows like it was like after parties of rave you know people have been raving their ass off for hours and uh, then we start playing chill out stuff at 3 a.m <laughs> but it just kind of proves that i've always it's always been about like playing with nice people and uh and that's actually the advice that I always give for young musicians, that uh, you should try to broaden your horizon as much as possible and play, learn other kind of stuff. And not just, even though if you love death metal, of course it's cool to know the classic, but uh, just learn a few songs from other genres also. It might help you with, come up with something more original also. And to respect other genres. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, I fully agree with that. I mean... When uh, when I play drums, I mean, the, the very first thing I was a part of was a cover band, just playing on weekends, playing in the bars, and then I yeah, got yeah. into original music, uh, started playing, like, uh, thrash metal, and then progressive metal, and then technical death metal, right. and then, you know, just, like, uh, being able to appreciate all these different sides, you know, it's like you start to appreciate groove, you start to appreciate uh, technical ability, you start to appreciate that songwriting process, because it, in every genre, there is something that you can appreciate musically that's going going on and something that you can take for your own ability and the fact you were able to take everything from uh classic wedding music uh, all the way to death metal all the way to uh, chill music and being able to incorporate that either into your bass or just your songwriting and instrumentation in some place i mean I, i've always found that uh, being able to listen to other music and appreciate other music is just a great thing to be able to progress yourself otherwise you have that fear of becoming stagnant because you're not coming up with new ideas absolutely i couldn't I agree with you more oh absolutely and yeah again i ju just being able to see this here on on this release alone and then uh everything to look forward to uh coming up in the future hopefully again with everything coming back to normalcy but now just uh here in 2020 being able to see this release
release, you know, just under a half hour, some amazing music that you got going on, and then that great twist at the end with the acoustic version of I Consume. It's just a fantastic <laughs> release, and I just love the people that you were able to get a part of this, being able to help mix and master, and the, the cover arts, and the, the, yeah, the cover arts with the colors and everything that's going on there. I think it just perfectly matches the mood of the release, and, you know, just, you know, even though it took a very long time to be able to get this off the ground and finally make it come to fruition, the more I listen to it, the more that I do realize it was absolutely worth the wait. Well, thank you. Really make me blush here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you absolutely deserve it. I mean, with everything that you're capable of with the songwriting and being able to go between instruments, and even when you don't feel comfortable with drums, you're still able to make a really cool beat come out in that acoustic form of I Consume. And, you know, it's like, I wouldn't have even guessed that was you on the drums. I mean, that just felt like such a, a great natural part of it. And, you know, uh, being able to play stand-up bass as well and just showing off that, um, you know, again, you know, it's a lot of people like the pigeonhole people like uh, they're only capable of one instrument or being able to play one kind of style because that's all they're familiar with and you're, you're continuing to burst through those doors showing off that you can play all these different styles all these great instrumentations and yeah i mean just seeing this coming out now everything to look forward to in the future i mean it's just great to be able to talk to you about all of it i mean this has been great well, thank you, and uh, I think that that's a good uh, mentality for life. To keep learning. Uh, I mean, I I'm no master with the guitar, but uh, I try to play as often as possible. You know, to become better, and then I can uh, <laughs> create even more. You know, come up with more complex stuff. Even though that's not, uh, you know, something that should be the aim, but just to have the you know the <clears throat> the tools to be able to do stuff that, that there's no like limitation. So I think it's just good mentality in life to keep learning, and uh, you know, the br your brain is 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 an organ it's like a muscle you need to tease it you need to learn new stuff or otherwise it's gonna wither away oh i couldn't agree more and you know i think with that i think that's an amazing note to end on and i gotta thank you again for taking this time to be able to talk to me um i'm very happy we were able to do this and you reaching out to me to be able to uh, at least cover Absolutely. this in some kind of way and i'm so thankful for it because this release is so awesome i can't wait for everyone to be able to check it out next week uh i i know this is going to rank very high on my best of 2020 list that i do and it was just great to be able to catch up again i know it's been uh, a few years now but it's always great to be able to talk to you i mean whether it's in person or over skype exactly. it's always a great time to be able to talk to you and i can't thank you enough even though uh, you're feeling under the weather right now the fact that you were able to take the time to be able to talk to me it's truly appreciated the pleasure is all mine thank you josh for yeah this opportunity to talk <laughs> and you know showing interest to uh, my solo stuff and because uh, it's it's not that easy i i really noticed this uh, but, uh it's easier when you have a label and you know the press people a and r you know contacting uh people then it's easier to get uh, attention so thank you very much for this chance to talk about the ep and anyway really cool to catch up with you and uh, i really hope we'll see you soon again face oh. to face and uh, let's grab a, a beer or something Oh, absolutely. When you guys come back here to Minnesota, I, I'd love to be able to grab a beer too and being able to catch up on good times because it, it's going to be yes. a, a lot. I mean, it's going to be too long when that happens. There'll be a lot of stuff to be able to catch up on and talk some good music and have some good quality beer. Mm -hmm. 